guys. Welcome to episode 14 of The Weekly. And we have Mr. Juan Bagnell back. He was out. Um... I'm so bummed that I miss Soldier. Yes. I mean, I'm glad you guys were able to find someone a little smaller than me. You know, help a little, a little guy out. <laughs> you know. As soon as you said that, as soon as you said that, Warren just left. He was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, anyway, it's good to have you back, man. Glad um, to be back. And of course, we have Mr. Warren Bowman. He looks like he's going through some technical issues, but thumbs up. Let's do this. I'm yeah, right that's what I want to hear. Yeah. All right. So let's kick things off with the uselessness of the week. Uh, this one comes from a lawsuit that Pele is, fi is filing against Samsung. Um, because uh, Paley says they used his likeness for an ad, and of course they didn't pay him. Um, so let me share that while you give your thoughts, because you know I, I find this interesting. So this is Pele. If you guys don't know who Pele is, great soccer legend from uh, Brazil, and this is the ad. Um, sorry, here we go. That's the ad right there. Mm -hmm. That's the guy, football, and boom. So what do you say? I. Well, I mean, it's it, it, it's tricky until I mean, because I don't know. Has Samsung had any kind of official response to to what what's uh, happened here? Or are they pulling the well? Now that this is sort of an ongoing court case, we can't comment on it. Um, hello. No, I'm I'm still there. I, I hear myself like. Oh no, sorry, sorry. It's because I shared screens and my audio. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, no, all that so, mess, yeah. so but but yeah, I mean like that. That's the one part of this puzzle that I'd be curious is if there was a miscommunication and how the likeness could be used. Or I mean, that's that's what I don't understand is if Samsung hasn't replied to this, then this just looks like one of the dumbest moves a company could make to use someone's a famous person's likeness like this, um, and then not pay them for it. So, um, yeah, Samsung has not said anything yet. So then um, we can firmly walk into the territory if they haven't said anything by now. <laughs> that this is a this is a tremendously boneheaded move on their part. And that, see, um, see, I I disagree. To I mean, to me, look, I look at it like that's not Pele. That's just me. I'm like, it doesn't look you like him. You don't think it, it looks enough like him? With no, no, it does not. It, it, to me, to me, almost saying that looks like Pele let's say it's like every black person looks alike. That's to yeah. me. <laughs> so so uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, I, I see where they're going with it. I get that marketing side, but when I first looked at it, I was like, no, okay, and I moved on. So, so you you feel like like the the implication is is not enough for Pele to be upset over potential misuse of of him of, of his likeness. Yeah, that's that's me, but you know gotcha. what? Um you, I, I, I get it. I, I get I can see why his people look at it and go, Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 could be you. I mean it is, but to me it shows a TV game, a guy watching the TV screams or is is shining on his face, so I don't know. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I, I, I guess okay. So in in uh in in falling on either side of this, I I feel it's kind of one. The the one thing I I think we could probably both agree on is that this is a very clumsy ad. I don't understand why. Yeah, I, I would agree on that. Yes. Half of, uh, half of the the image for this, especially when the TV is relegated to such a small, uh, small part of the uh, the overall ad. But then also, where. What is the context for this? Because it doesn't look like this TV is connected to anything, and uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I agree. I, I think what it was is that they took the shot, they had it. Once they framed it, they kind of went, "Huh, oh, kind of looks like." And someone's like, "Yeah, not really." Nah, this is wrong with it. I, I, that's <laughs> probably what happened. That is probably what happened with it. You know, where they hired a guy. And the, you know they were like, you know, let's have a guy have an ad where he's kind of looking at the TV and you can see the expression, blah blah blah. And then they're like, huh, you know, that could look like Pele. Nah, it's fine. Run the ad, done. So we spent tens of dollars on photoshopping this, so just go ahead and run it. Yeah, just just do it, just do it. So you know what? They'll go to court. They'll settle. Um, I mean, Pele makes a lot of money. Samsung has a lot of money. They can duke it out. 
that that's that's my own thought process there. All right. So moving on from that, uh, uh, Warren, do you have anything to chime in, or are you ready to go, or you still have any audio issues? Um, no, oh, there's Warren. Everything is, I guess, what it is. Uh, Hangouts isn't going to work properly other than the way it is now, so that's fine. You can just keep going. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, we went to our first topic, the iPhone SE, launched on Thursday, and Apple did that, of course, just because April 1st is Friday. Um, and, um, you know, we've had... I know Juan has put out his 24-hour take on it. I've done my review. Um, we'll start off there. Um, Juan, what do you think about this device, the iPhone SE, this this little tiny iPhone right here? So uh, I've been rocking my space gray. Uh, I've been digging it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, this is, I think, uh, again, I think Apple has made one of the best cases for... Uh, Arguments, I should say. It's one of the best arguments for building a premier, premium, small form factor device. Um, even more so than the iPhone success in many ways. Um, and this is the first time I feel like the pricing is, a pro is more appropriate for what it is that an iPhone might bring to the table. Um, so I, I've actually, I, I mean, I know a number of people in my circles of family and friends who I can heartily recommend this phone for. Now, I think what's funny has been the, the sort of insane, so we put up a, we haven't put out a full review yet, because I know you have a full review out. We haven't put out a full review yet on Pocket now. We have a sort of a, a 24 hours with the iPhone SE, just sort of our first impressions. And uh, I call it a mid-ranger. And that is pissing people off left and right that I would dare call any Apple product a mid-ranger. <laughs> this is precisely what this phone is designed for. Designed to replace a three-year-old iPhone uh, 5S. It's a four-year-old hardware design, and it doesn't have everything that a 6S has. So it's got a very poor FaceTime camera. It doesn't have MIMO, uh, M-I-M-O antennas. Uh, it doesn't yeah. have support for LTE Advanced. It has the slower Touch, touch ID sensor. Um, I'm missing a few other things too, but there are other reasons why you would call one phone a flagship and another phone less than a flagship. <laughs> but everyone's sort of latching onto this idea. Well, it's got the A9 processor, so it's better. And or, okay, fine. Or in my country, it's more expensive than some cheap Android phones. I, okay, but that still doesn't change the fact that this isn't a top of the line offering from Apple. It still doesn't change the fact that it's not designed to compete against Galaxy S7s and LG G5s. So what does that make it? It's not a flagship. It's not the premium offering. It's a mid-ranger. In fact, if you look at Apple's lineup, it's the entry-level option for an iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where, I mean, like, for as much as I'm actually enjoying this phone, this is, like, the first time in a while that I've, I've been facing ire from iPhone fans where they're they're really upset that I've I've deigned to I don't know what I don't know what 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 the uh, what the slur is there well well I I think I think you know we were talking earlier in my case in my I, my comparison video I technically I called it I called it the same phone as iPhone success and people abused me for it. the reason I called it that I said internally it functions exactly the same way as your success because of the A9 processor, RAM, all that stuff. When I game with it, it, I see no difference there. So I got, of course, you know, my own share of vitriol and and bitching, you know, uh, <laughs> on that fact. But I mean, yeah, truly, it is a mid ranger because there are certain things that are missing from there. Mm -hmm. and, and to a certain degree, also, Apple has made it that it also performs almost exactly like its flagship device. So in terms of just raw performance. So. Um, you know, my thoughts on the phone, um, I, I would say, though, you know what? I give Apple props for keeping the same experience. Because uh, since I fired it up, I was like, all right, let's see how sucky this thing will be. And it works the same way. It's just really tiny. It is, I mean, you know, this is this is. Oh, I, I, the other things, the Taptic engine isn't there. So the yeah. way that vibrations and notifications are sent and uh, 3D touch, those are the two things that I forgot. Exactly. So it, it really is a small phone and... You know, if you're one of those people in the iOS ecosystem that's still on the 4 or the 5, you need to upgrade, yeah, that's for you, right there. Um, that's what this phone is, and, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing more to it, but people are stuck in this, you know, trying to quantify it whichever way they want, but, you know what, hey, it's an iPhone, it works as an iPhone, and 
that's just it. Uh, just don't take selfies with it. Use the rear camera because if you take <laughs> selfies, I mean, the front-facing camera is downright terrible. Yeah, it's really uh, bad. Yeah, it's, so. I mean, it's, it is. It is literally the bare minimum that you can. Get one point. One point two. I. I. You know, somebody asked me like, you didn't mention it. I was like, in my review, I'm like, it's non-existent. <laughs> There's no need to mention, you know, the front-facing camera. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, guys. Um, I, I know just to and just to kind of add to this idea, though. I, I. I. I know a lot of people have been complaining about things like, oh, well, Apple's run out of creativity, and look, it's the same recycled design. This is absolutely a Tim Cook phone. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, and and I mean that both in the fact that it is kind of funny, but that also I want to like I, I want to give Apple respect where they deserve it. And Tim Cook is an amazing operations guy. You guys have heard me say this kind of stuff before. Um, you see a, a hole, a potential hole in your lineup. You sold 30 million four-inch cheap iPhones over 2015. The iPhone 5s cannot sustain continued software updates. You're going to have a gap in that market. You're going to leave money on the table. Tim Cook is not going to leave money on the table. And so what's the most uh, cost-effective way to get a fit for that hole? And what's the cheapest way that you can do that so that you can maintain a higher profit margin? And voila, we have the iPhone SE. And the byproduct of that means that the iPhone SE stands to be the best accessorized, air quotes, new phone that's ever been released because you have four years of hardware support from different third-party manufacturers for building out cases and covers and skins, camera mounts and enclosures and uh, lens accessories. You know, I, I have a bunch of these little magnetic lenses, you know, they, that they pop onto the back of your phone and they always, they still come. If you buy these things, they still come with magnetic adhesives for the iPhone 5S. <laughs> specifically made for the iPhone 5S. So, I mean, instantly, instantly, I've got accessory support for the iPhone SE. I didn't have to wait for anyone to make anything. So I, I think this is actually a super smart play from Apple as long as we are fair with the fact that, one, it's not supposed to compete against newer flagships from Android or even the iPhone 6S. It handily chews up Apple's own market, which I think is a pretty bold move. There is zero reason to buy an iPhone 6 now. This is a the iPhone 6 is now a very poor purchase um, now that the iPhone SE exists. Well, unless you want a bigger screen size, then yeah. And every other benefit from the iPhone SE down to the cheaper price, because it's what it's 150 bucks cheaper than than an iPhone 6. Even down to things like potential software support in the future. Do we what do we think is going to handle the next generation of iOS better, the iPhone 6 or the iPhone SE? You know, so every little piece of that. And also, I think it throws into stark contrast that when Apple increased the screen size, they did not build in the ergonomic concerns into their software very well. Because even on an iPhone 6S, when I'm reaching across the screen to hit that upper left arrow when I'm holding the phone right-handed, that does require me to move the phone in my hand a little bit. Whereas on the iPhone SE, it's bam, it's right there. I don't no, have to. No, no, Juan, no, no, you need to grow bigger thumbs and hands. No, see, there, there are a ton of people just like me with tiny little hobbit hands. But I mean, the same. But the same concern would be for you on an iPhone Plus, right? You know, so even. Oh no, I can handle it. Oh, what, are you, what, what are you talking about? So I, do I, you have an iPhone Plus there? I got a edge. Anyway, moving no. to Sam. <laughs> no, no, that, that, yeah. no, but that's specifically yeah. what I mean is because that's the difference. On Android, all of your, your, your home button and your navigation controls are at the bottom. So as soon as you sit uh, an Android phone in your hand for where, where you reach those controls, you're not moving to the upper upper corner of the screen to try and reach stuff. All of your controls are right down there at the bottom. On an iPhone, your home button's at the bottom, and a lot of your controls, like back buttons, are at the upper left corner of the screen. That made sense when your thumb could reach everywhere, no matter what sized hands you had. That doesn't make as much sense ergonomically when you move to an Apple phablet. That's true. All right, let's, uh, Sam, uh, Warren, anything you guys want to add about it? Any, any thoughts? Any comments? Nope. Okay, so Warren mm -hmm. says nope. Mm -hmm. Sam? Uh, no comments, man. Okay, <laughs> this is the first time ever 
<laughs> on the show where Sam and Warren are completely silent on the matter. Okay, so let's move on to something that maybe will concern Warren a little bit more. Now, Verizon is tacking on some extra cash to their data plans. The uh, unlimited data plans are going to face a $20 hike come May 15th. Yeah. Um, so, any thoughts on that, Warren? I mean, you know that. I mean, you're a Verizon customer, so I wanted to go with you first there to see see your thoughts on the whole idea. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm not surprised that they're out to gouge people for more money. That's kind of Verizon's mo, and has always been their mo. It's just to uh, try to get more money and try to force people off of plans, and they're not going to do that. And until they can literally, will try to do that at some point. We'll just say we'll force everyone off, you know, off their unlimited plan, but. Simply, I'm, I'm not surprised by Verizon. The, 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 the next step will be charging another tech and another $10 on it the next year. They'll just keep doing that because that's kind of, unfortunately for them, that's their, uh, that's what they're known for, especially from the customers. It's just tacking on a premium, squeezing dollars, but not necessarily getting um, a lot of data or a lot of minutes or a lot of things out of the plan. You know, if you have Verizon, you're going to be spending a lot of money, and they're just kind of continuing to do that. Here with tacking on another twenty bucks on people's plans, unfortunately. Okay, uh, Sam. Um, uh, uh, this is weird. It's like they don't realize that people are coming up nipping at their heels. T-Mobile is gaining a ton of consumers. Uh, even Sprint is beginning to turn stuff around, and Verizon yeah, sure. is now billing its users more? That makes no sense, but I think this started last November, it's saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it did. With, with the addition of that 20, 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's a yeah. huge surprise. I mean, that's not in an any insignificant general. amount of money. That isn't. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Really? It's kind of a guy I've got to kind of criticize them on yeah, it for this, you know. Because that's over over the life of, I mean, over a year, the life of a contract is a two-year contract. That's easily close to 500 bucks you're spending. Additionally, on your contract, when you already spent money on the phone, you already spent money. Wow! So they're basically saying, add another five hundred bucks over two years. That is crazy. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much it is crazy. Uh, Juan, anything you want to add? I mean, no. They've uh, both Sam and Warren have covered this. It's it's just an incredulous move. Mm -hmm. I don't understand where where Verizon is trying to position their service. I understand that they have every confidence in them having, air quotes, the best network. But the realities of what people can experience on T-Mobile or AT&T, I mean, or even Sprint in a lot of major metro areas, is completely competent service. Um, so... If this if this is maybe one of those moves that finally prompts some Verizon customers just to look at what their options are in their area, then kudos to Verizon for increasing competition. Um, yeah. It really once, doesn't make any sense to me. Once your customers ask, do I really need to have awesome cell phone service at my home, or can I just go off of Wi-Fi? That changes everything. Because if you don't need it at home and you only need it when you go out, hey, T-Mobile might work well for you. at t might work great for you. Maybe even Sprint will work great for you. Oh, you project, project, your, project Fire, right? Well, exactly, or Project Fire. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, I don't know. Verizon doesn't get it. So they haven't gotten it for a while, and I think it's beginning to show even more. That you, they just don't get it. Um, before we move to our next topic, Chicago Herbs here has an off-topic comment. Uh, which I want you guys to kind of answer for him, uh, or at least talk about. He says, I've heard good things about the Nexus 6P camera, so I traded my LG V10 for the Nexus 6P uh, plus $100 on camera, and it's bad most of the time. So he is wondering why people are saying the 6P camera is great. When okay, okay, let me, let, me, let me break this down. What's his, what's his name? What's, this, what's his name again? Oh, Hold on, I got this, I got this. Chicago what's his name? Yeah, Chicago. What's his name? Chicago, Chicago Herbs, yeah. Chicago Herb. Really? Um, <laughs> God, ah, stop that word, man. Uh, you suck at taking pictures with your phone. Oh! Sorry, oh. This to you. Now, oh, you could oh, learn how to you. take a little pictures a little bit better if you buy Mr. From from Pocket Now, some character guy, Mr. Juan Carlos back now. He can give you some great tools. Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> and tell okay. you how to take better photos. Dude, wait, why aren't you showing the book? You're not helping with this one. Oh, sorry, hold on. I've got a screen share. Show the book, Juan. Show the book. <laughs> Warren had a plug-in moment right there. Like, we, we, this is this is a perfect moment to do a plug. 
<laughs> I can't screen share. <laughs> oh, duh. You didn't sell your book through Playbooks, did you? <laughs> no, I can't screen share in Hangouts. I, my, it, it, it did, uh, I, I got delayed in adding it to Playbooks. I'm actually writing out two extra new sections, and it's going to be the 1.1 revision. And then it'll Ooh. get updated on Amazon, and uh, then the, the new version will be uploaded to uh, Google Play. Okay, wow. Uh, well, Chicago, look, um, the LG V10 camera is better than the 6B. 6B is not a bad camera. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, you know, V10 is better. So in terms of changing for camera, I don't know why you did that in the first place. Um, well, I mean, that's no, no, no. that's I mean, the like, first let, thing I'll say. Let, 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 let's, let's be fair. I mean, like, there are a number of reasons why someone might switch from a V10 to a Nexus 6P. And then the Nexus 6P had all of this buzz about the camera, so you think, oh, well, if I want better software updates, because Marshmallow hasn't rolled out for a lot of V10s, for example, and we're already yeah. starting to play with Android N previews, um, you think, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not that much of a risk. you know? So they say it's got a great... Oh, wow. That's what happens when you don't put your book uh, on... Um... Uh, well, you don't put your book uh, on Playbooks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but 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 uh, <laughs> all right. back. Google just just said like, oh, the Hangouts call has ended, and you're like, I doubt that very much. Google, I think you're lying. <laughs> Google's um, like, you said you didn't put your book on Playbooks. <laughs> well, yeah, right. call is exactly. Over. It's over all right now. <laughs> you said disparaging things about Google, so now they're gonna mm-hmm. jack me out of uh, trying to jump into Hangouts. So anyway, just to to finish my point though, that I can totally understand why someone would make that transition, and then when you discover. The Nexus 6P camera got so much buzz, not because it was an amazing camera across the entire industry. The Nexus 6P camera got a lot of buzz because it was the absolute best camera we've ever seen on a Nexus. Yeah. And that echo chamber really did drive this. This is a great camera. This is a great camera. This is a great camera. And then in the background, you could hear people whispering, for a Nexus, for a Nexus, for a Nexus. <laughs> And it is. It's a. It's a. It's a good camera, but it doesn't. The V10 for me is still the the most formidable overall camera package. There are certainly compromises. Um, I don't love the audio noise reduction. I don't love the mics. The lenses are usually a varying quality on the V10. I don't think LG has the same kind of quality control that Samsung or uh, especially like Microsoft with Lumia uh, Zeiss lenses. Um, but Still, overall, when I think camera, the phone I leave the house with more often than not is the LG V10. I mean, the, the, the V10's the V10's focus was on its camera as well too. I mean, the whole oh, yeah. whole kind of point of that device was how how much high quality the camera itself actually was. And um, uh, when you when you're talking about the Nexus 6P, you're talking about a phone that its main focus isn't necessarily the camera uh, to begin with, but the camera on itself. It, like Juan said, it's probably the best camera on a Nexus phone that we've seen in a long time, and it competes against other devices that not necessarily the, the camera is its, is its main focus. It competes exactly. well against a Galaxy Note 5. It competes well against a Samsung well, Galaxy S6. Even, mm-hmm. even against that, because Chicago Herbs does mention something very specific. He yeah. said, I couldn't focus on a macro shot this morning at all with the 6P. I grabbed my girlfriend's Note 5 and had no problem. Um... Yeah, yeah, I would say even against the Note 5, the Nexus 6P, it's that's a tough competition. I think the Nexus 6P delivers some of the best fun features we've ever seen on an Android phone, like slow motion video. The S7 is finally catching up to what the Nexus can do with slow motion video. The 6P handily competes for HDR photography. Um, but the actual optics on the phone, the focusing uh, system on the phone, the uh, the sensor size on the phone, all of those things weighed together. And, and you know, optical image stabilization systems, for example. Um, the 6P doesn't doesn't quite reach that top tier um, that uh, of performance that we see from Samsung, LG, and Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, speaking of LG, quickly, quickly, any thoughts on the LG G5? I, we, so we just got one at Pocket Now to unbox, and Jaime is going to be taking the main side of the review on that. So looking at what they've got to offer, and then seeing some of the other videos too about potential build quality issues, um, I still think this is going to be one of the most interesting phones of the year. <coughs> I'm a little apprehensive. I'm a little anxious that we're not seeing the G5 catch up to a lot of the things that I like about the V10. 
And that's dangerous territory because uh, the design is radical, but if the guts are only minorly improved over the G4, there were a lot of issues that I had with the G4 that I hoped would be get would be getting ironed out. So I'm 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 now sort of on that knife's edge. I think this is going to be still going to be one of the more compelling phones of the year, but then also it's it's got to be weighed against the fact that LG has significant branding and advertising problems, so people just aren't even going to know about it. Yeah, I, a Galaxy or an iPhone. Speaking of that, um, I, I don't have a G5. Uh, don't know when that's coming. Uh, but I did get my hands on the G5 about uh, a week ago, and I am <laughs> not impressed. I am not impressed at all. I just holding it next to next to an S7 or Edge. I was just like, nah, forget it. But then again, I have not spent time to review it, so we'll see when that comes. But I also wanted to ask you guys, have you guys seen any of the LG G5 advertising with Jason Staten? No, I, mean, I haven't. I've seen the YouTube I've heard video, of it. I haven't seen it out in the wild. No, just the YouTube. Yeah, the YouTube. Um, I heard it was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, it, it almost has nothing to do with the phone. It reminds me of the Robert Downey Jr. Um, HTC ads. There's one where he's on top of bulls and he's riding towards uh, uh, a lady who's coming on a motorcycle and she's burning on fire and he, he you know, uses a fire extinguisher and you know, quenches the fire and next to me he's driving off with her on the motorcycle and that's it. LG G5. And again, it, it, it's everything that we've been talking about for years now. It, not, it's not that you have to copy Apple or copy Samsung in your ads, but you got to tell us what this phone is about. You can't trick people into being interested about a phone. A phone is a mission-critical communications device, communications and commuting, computing device for most people these days. You're not going to impress us with Jason Satham in an ad doing wacky things <laughs> to take a risk with the most important gadget that, mo that, that people own these days. And, and I, there are so many things about this phone that consumers are never going to know about. Outside of this circle of people who watch podcasts like these, no one's going to care about a modular phone. Mm -hmm. You have to deliver that information to them in a way that's compelling. And Samsung used to be the gold standard of our, our phones have every feature in the kitchen sink. We have the Swiss Army knife phones because, uh, watch, we're at this uh, weird graduation party, but everything is about the phone. I'm controlling the TV through this phone. Oh, my phone fell in the pool, but it's okay because it's waterproof. And, hey, check out this really fast camera on my phone as someone goes diving off the diving board. You know, they were doing wacky things. It was a bright, colorful, stupid ad, but everything about that ad was talking about uh, the phone. The phone. And I, I don't I don't get it. I don't get what companies are doing where they think it's super like HTC. It's super clever to have um, Gary Oldman talking about cool things and tough things, not talking about the phone. <laughs> I don't get it. If you guys want to see the ad, I put it in the description. Also, guys, I sent it in the chat just so you can just watch it. the ad. And it's not <laughs> not that bad. It's okay. But uh, it, it, it doesn't do talk about the phone though. No, it and does. It, it, and they had no, to spend a lot of money to get. It, I mean, no, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't go through and say this is the camera module and this is the audio module and this is no. It's used everything in the ad. It even used the weird round camera movie thingy. It's actually pretty good. It's actually decent. It's it's funny. I think it's funny. Uh, I don't I, think it's too bad. I I, think I, it's just, I just don't I don't I don't get it though. Like I mean, it, to me, the thing about it is when you put Jason Statham like that, it takes you away from the phone. It is kind of distracting. Jason Statham. That's the problem. So it's not like the, the thing about it. If you want to do an ad like this, you have to put a nobody <laughs> to go through. Wow. No, seriously, you have to put somebody who's not recognizable because then you're looking at his actions, not the person. Yeah, no, it's something, no, no. something that won't distract from. I mean, what is it? Samsung's using a stand-up comedian as the voice of their commercials. And uh, I think let's that's not actually talk about a, that. I think <laughs> that's actually a pretty smart play, though, because <laughs> it's interesting, engaging storyteller delivery, but it doesn't really? distract oh. from the device. I mean, yeah, oh, sure. I haven't seen any of those commercials, so I, I can't speak. I'm on sure it. you. That's just it. I guarantee you, you have. Oh, oh no! I've seen, seen is little Wayne pouring one, champagne one, on the damn one. phone. I That's guarantee you that I haven't, because every single time it shows anywhere, I turn the TV off. So I have not seen <laughs> that commercial. <laughs> For you to have recognized that that's what was happening means that you still saw one of those. Exactly. 
no, no, actually, I basically, uh, the news came out of who the spokesperson was. So anytime I see, I hear that voice, TV, switch channel, or turn off. <laughs> I haven't watched it from start to finish. I, I, am, I am totally... And I'm, for you to recognize that that's what's about to happen, you've still seen. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess you could say I've seen it, but I've not watched it from start to finish, so I wouldn't know anything that was going I'm on. I'm not saying you've, you've ever <laughs> completed one, but I'm saying you've seen one. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess. So, so moving on to you Microsoft. Have it. So uh, what Microsoft. We, what we, sorry, go ahead, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft had its build conference this week, and they made a couple of uh, major announcements. Uh, none of them were sexy in terms of like you know how you know build in the past or Google I/O where you get all these big product announcements. This one was all about AI bots. It was all about artificial intelligence and how that is what they're going to do to move things in the future. This also came about from I don't know from the name of the company they bought that you know helps them do software for uh, Windows Phone. Everyone thought mm -hmm. that the company was going to be able to help them transition Android software over. But it looks like they bought them for almost a different purpose, is creating these AI bots that help apps talk to each other, and also apps can communicate on, on different um, operating systems. It seems like Microsoft wants to be that backbone, doesn't care what operating system you're running, they just want to be the person who you have to use to get things to run properly. Uh, I don't know if you guys checked out the news. I don't know what do you guys think. Uh, Sam, I'll start with you because I know we talked about this a little bit uh, with the <coughs> Microsoft AI bots. It's, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't quite get at the end of the day what, um, how they're going to implement this. They will have to implement it across all OSs. So they would have to not only do it on Windows Phone, they would have to do it on Android phones, and they would have to do it on um, iOS devices as well. For, for this to actually make a dent, so yeah, no, but that, but that's the thing. That's why they bought the company who made the the app structure works for Android and iOS already right now. So having that company create this these AI bots is basically saying that it doesn't matter what you create it for, as long as you have the AI doing the work for you in the background. That's what it's meant. Uh, to be. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. It's, it's gonna the AI personal assistant. So I guess this is the beginning of the AI personal assistant, but it's. It's how the handoff, like I said before yeah. we talked about this, it's going to be that handoff, right? It's going to be, is the AI actually doing, <laughs> taking that action for you, or is the AI actually just, you know, prompting you to take the action? If it is actually taking the action for you, I call this a fail. If it's actually prompting you to take the action, then it becomes a little more nuanced to where it doesn't get overly annoying or naggy um, when it's suggesting um, actions for you to take. So it's, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see. I'd like to see exactly when a product actually comes out with this. Yeah, the, the demo they ran at Build, the AI was doing a lot of the prompting. So, for instance, you know, with Cortana or like any of the services yeah. like that, you, allow, you give it access to your calendar, your email, those kind of things. And the person was talking to somebody in, I think, I can't remember where it was, was in, somewhere in South America. And, um, you know, they were going to actually be visiting that location. So the AI already started typing, you know, do you want to tell them that you're going to South America? And you go, yes, you know, whatever the case may be. And then immediately started searching for hotels and, of course, paired it with the Western Hotel because they are Western club members, whatever, you know, that thing is called. And then the Western AI bot contacted the, uh, the, its own AI bot and said, here are the options for hotels you have because you're a Western member. So those kind of things, you still have to select and choose what you want to do, but it's doing that middleman work for you. You know, once your boss sends you an email, like, you have to travel to Colombia next week. It's already finding hotels for you and doing all that stuff, and then you have to select and pick. So that's what they were kind of showing uh, in there with the AI bots. Uh, I'll move on to you, Warren. What do you think? Skynet is upon us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. I can't remember. I was going to do the Lex Luthor thing, and I can't remember what, it, what he actually did in the movie. Then he, then he goes all crazy and says, They're coming. Oh, yeah. I think he said, Ding, ding, ding. They're ding, coming. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, ding. They're coming. Skynet. But, but, um,. Yeah, it's pretty. It, it's pretty cool to, to 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 for Microsoft. They're making a very good strategic position and getting themselves in a uh, position where there's somewhere involved. If not, their offering is not being used, something of their server, so their software is being used in some way to get to 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 either, like you said, talk to 
talk to, just how hard different pieces of software doing services talk to one another or something or whatnot that they're sort of involved in it. Um, it's a little early, obviously. We're, we're just talking about AI and we're, we're trying to get, we're trying to get, you know, VR and 3D and all the free, excuse me, VR and um, HoloLens and stuff like that. You know, we're trying to get that out first, but we're already talking about, you know, AI and robots. But it's interesting stuff. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll probably wait a little bit later when I hear a little bit more, when it comes a little bit more tangible the, to get a little more excited about it. Uh, Juan? Yeah, kind of in the same boat. Um, I, you know, what I think is funny is when we start talking about machine learning and AI, everyone sort of uh, sort of assumes like science fiction, you know, that we're going to have like this self-aware thing that can have human kinds of discussions. Like uh, if you saw Ex Machina, like somehow someone, there's someone <laughs> in a remote mountain laboratory who's going to flip the switch and suddenly there's going to be a machine intelligence which can destroy humanity. Um, for, for things like... How, how progress actually makes it to consumers. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen more of this already, like maybe dog level intelligence, you know, <laughs> or baby level intelligence in actual consumer applications. So it's kind of interesting to see that Microsoft is putting this stuff out there um, publicly in the state that it's currently in, because we know it's going to take a little while. We know that the first couple generations of this stuff are going to be obnoxious. I mean, one of the bots that they showed off was like a Domino's pizza bot. That's absolutely not something that I need <laughs> sort of interacting with my Skype calls. <laughs> you know, like, hey, I'm kind of hungry. Boop, Domino's deep dish pan pizzas. And you're like, no, I don't, don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Domino's just wants to be on everything. Yeah, it's, it's Domino's. It is, yeah, sure. it is actually pretty impressive because um, we also did, we, uh, I did the castings for uh, the Domino's pizza tracker, the online pizza tracking service. That that is a really forward-thinking tech uh, food company. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is actually pretty impressive what they're what they're uh, building out for uh, for future consumer interactions. And I'm not surprised actually that there is a Domino's pizza pizza bot that you that that is built on this Microsoft platform. Um, but but still, ultimately, I think what we what we would all want to see is something akin to what was featured in the movie Her where we have excellent voice dictation capabilities, transcription capabilities, where we've got um, proactive computing services that can help us out day to day. And, and these are going to be the first steps. I mean, actually, you know, like Siri was the first step in that direction. Then Cortana became more casual and Google now became more powerful. But I, I want to get to a point where maybe we could even get rid of every single traditional user interface that requires touch if we needed to. You know, mm -hmm. that we could we could actually move into a, a situation where all interactions can happen more organically or through voice or through dictation or something like that if we wanted to. Um, that would be, to me, an ideal computing future. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think this is exciting. It's just not the sexiest announcement possible, um, at least right now. Just because... Oh, and, and build, build is always... I mean, like, there are so many <laughs> things going on at Build, like, ooh, the new Windows anniversary update. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, no. this, this is not, but I, I like the way they're going, just because especially uh, playing with the Amazon um, uh, tap and, mm -hmm. and using that service, you know, from Amazon and knowing that, you know, Microsoft's bots, at least the way they are describing their bots, are smarter than what Amazon is offering, and Amazon right now is killing that game entirely. So having that personal assistant that will always check in for you on many things, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I mean, like, I can, s I, I see it more, at least in my own use case scenario, somebody sends me an appointment and I don't put it in my calendar. It's already put in my calendar for me because I've given it access to my email, right? And therefore, um, it's going to remind me the day ahead of time or at least a couple hours, like, hey, you need to go to this appointment. Those kind of things, at least on the very beginning st uh, status, really moves moves this along, but... It's a long process. Uh, it's something that will, will take a while. But something you can do now is you can turn your Xbox into a developer uh, system. What? Yes. All you have to do is pay $19. Uh, I think it's $19 a year. And then um, follow the steps. Uh, I'll put a link for you guys if you guys want to do that. And you can turn your Xbox into a developer system, build your game on Visual Studio, and then throw it on your Xbox and test it out. Is anyone excited? No. I don't build the game, so I'm not that excited, really. 
I mean, for people who build games, this is a big thing because you get a really <laughs> cheap developer. Because the developer um, hardware costs, they, they can be very pricey. So. Yeah, they can be. They go in the thousands. Developer kits are expensive. So, yeah. Yeah, for so indie games, it's, it's a good start. We might actually start seeing a little bit more indie games on the Xbox if this picks up. So, that might be something exciting. There are a few um, tower defense games. Most of the tower defense games I've actually played are all indie games. Yeah, yeah. So it would be nice to, um, to get some other um, indie developers on the Xbox. That, yeah, was, and that was something that was really great with the Xbox 360. So. <coughs> No, that, that's very true. And you can opt in and out, so you can actually activate and deactivate uh, developer um, functionality on your Xbox One. So, I mean, it's nice. I think it's nice overall um, on that aspect. Anybody else wants to chime in? I, I know somebody said he doesn't develop games. Was that you, Warren? Well, no, I don't develop any games. <laughs> we know that. I, I don't develop any games either. I, I... Just thought I'd want to share. That. All, right, all right, all right. Moving on to something <laughs> else. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Before we leave builds, though, I was I, I really wanted to get your guys' reaction to the sort of casual, off-the-cuff remarks that Windows Phone was not going to be a major feature for Microsoft this year. Um, that was Remember one of the VPs was asked in, in interviews, like, "Oh, we definitely uh, we're we're definitely still Windows Phone is an important part of our lineup, but it's not going to be the tip of the spear." Oh, let me, let, let me tell. I didn't even I didn't even hear that. I was watching one of the videos on um, improved uh, pen functionality on the on uh, on the Surface or uh, with Windows, where you can actually sketch out like a map trail, and that will actually blend in with you know with the uh, the map itself, and then you can transfer it for any device. And the guy was like, yeah, you know, on my Surface, you know the, the dude who was at the press conference with the hat um, during the Surface press conference mm-hmm. and did the demo? He was like, yeah, on my Surface, you know, I can draw like, my trail and put it in there, and then I just transfer it to my, my Android phone. And I was like, no. and he's like, yeah. And he said Android clearly. I was like, just did this, da, 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 fra, out, done. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's dead. I mean, it's dead. So you're just now figuring out it's dead. Oh no no no! This is this is. Just well, he's, he's been holding on to it for a while. So I, know, I don't I don't even use a Windows Phone anymore. I mean, exactly. Well, no, <laughs> it's that I remember someone who, was like, who used to swear by his uh, his, uh, his Nokia Windows was like, "This is the best phone. Yeah. It's it gonna was. catch on." It God, catch did on. he ever? It was. God, ever. I mean, no, it was then. At least it even had more app function app functionality than it has now. So, I mean. And then they took away Bank of America, and I just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> no, well, and uh, well, and they didn't take away Bank of America. Bank of America took away Bank of America. Um, the 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 interesting thing to me is, is and it's sort of to your point, Sam, about us like having you know like celebrated Windows Phone, and then Warren's like, are you just realizing now that it's there? <laughs> um, there was still the idea of holding out hope for some kind of distant third place competition. It's not going to come from BlackBerry. It's not going to come from Samsung with Tizen. WebOS is dead. We need someone in the in the market that can act as some kind of disruptor because the Google Apple fight gets really dull after a while. You mean Samsung um, Apple fight? That's called what it is. Well, I, I mean, like I'm saying, <laughs> Android, iOS, but yeah, you're you're right that when it comes to the actual hardware, it's a Samsung <laughs> iPhone world, and we're all just living in it. It's a, uh, it, it it is just that that it's like, I don't know how much more evidence we can kind of keep seeing that Microsoft doesn't have a strategy here, and every time we hold out hope, like, oh well, you know, we're we're waiting for a new flagship for two years after the Lumia 930. Oh, the Lumia 950. We're finally going to see what Microsoft wants to do with the Windows Phone, and then it drops, and it's no, this isn't really what we want to do with the Windows Phone. We're going to come out someday with a Surface Phone, and then then you'll see what we really want to do with the Windows. Like, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm really tired of waiting. Every single update has been a debacle. We still don't have any good synergy between um, carrier branded devices and completely unlocked devices. Supposedly, a camera update came out, which is supposed to fix HDR uh, toggling, and it still isn't on my phone, so I can't comment on that. You know, like every single step of the chain has become less fun than when Nokia was responsible for building the phone and Microsoft was responsible for the software. And uh, 
to hear to hear a Microsoft rep just so casually say, "Oh yeah, we're not we don't really have any plans for Windows Phone over 2016." You're like, "Well, then why the hell? What what?" <laughs> that, that pretty much why kills should the I Surface Phone. Yeah. Charged. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unless the Surface Phone is called a Windows Mobile PC all over again. <laughs> <laughs> It could be the case with that thing. I mean, I mean I, yeah, it could be called a new Windows portability device. Right there in the palm of your hand. It might just be calling it, it just runs Windows 10 and they're not really going to say it's running. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it could running, be that. It, it, it could, it could, could, that, that phone could be the Intel one that's running the Intel processor inside of it, the, the, the one that's supposed to compete with the Snapdragon all processor. See, all, that, like, look, if Microsoft wants to win me back with a Windows phone, yes, have that there, but look... I give me the ability to stream my Xbox games to my to to my Windows Phone. Come on, just give me that ability at least. At least so I know that at least I have a portable Xbox. Something. I mean, you guys and, can and, do it. And even it's that's possible. not going to be enough to sort of soothe those wounds. Oh no, no, I said me. Have... I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm just oh. saying this one thing. To oh, okay, okay, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. On, I'm, while we're talking, I'm going to boot up my Lumi and I'm going to see if I have a camera update so that I can finally control the. Freaking HDR photos on the supposedly awesome. Yeah, there's no update because I, I actually <laughs> use a nine. I use a 950 for, for as a work phone and. There's no update. Yeah. yeah there's no update. Um, all right, moving on to another company. Well, there could be an update because since it decides to randomly update it, it, it's fucking self, and just tells you, well, we we already dialed on it. We're going to schedule it because you have no control over your device. Is 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 another big faux pas with Windows 10. So yeah. it could have been there, and I could have skipped the update because it isn't like it keeps the notification to tell you there's still an update. All right, moving on to Sony. Uh, reports are that there's going to be a PlayStation 4K coming out at the end of the year, of course, to boost up the Sony uh, VR. Thoughts on the PS4 4K, guys? Interesting. How many 4K TVs are out there in the wild right now? A lot. A lot. Really? Yeah. I mean, you go to a Costco, the pricing on 4K TVs is getting really close to the higher-end 1080p TVs. Oh. Uh. Well, yeah. in, in, in one year, in, in less of so from December of last year, no, 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 December of two years ago, December of 2014 to December of 2015, we saw prices yeah. on 4K TVs drop from like 10 grand a pop for a 40 inch TV to around $1,500 for really nice 50 inch plus. Yeah, on remember, Vizio's pricing is much lower. LG2, LG's on their flagship line, they used to have, last year, they used to have, uh, they had only two 4Ks and then a bunch of 1080Ps. This year, it's just one 1080P. And the rest okay, is good. So, yeah. Hey, maybe this is the best way to, uh, to go ahead for them. Just upgrade it to 4K and keep going. <laughs> So what does that say about uh, PlayStation 5? That, that means it's going to be even longer before we see the next um, iteration of uh, a PlayStation. Then. Uh, yeah, I mean... Probably, yeah. It's going to uh, be... Uh, because this is this is more powerful hardware, right? So we expect to make... Expect, I'm sorry, Microsoft to make, uh, follow suit, too. Mm-hmm. And um, whatever Nintendo decides to drop better be 4K or else, they can go shoot themselves. <laughs> or else. <laughs> or else. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, Nintendo could, you know, could come up and be like, "Yeah, this is the most super powerful 10 inch console." Right. So. No, they're gonna go with 2K. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Nintendo likes to fudge in between, right? They go, "Yeah, this is a powerful 2K console." We're like, "We have 4K TVs, man." Well, it's still, it's still. It uses half of it. It's, it's half still, of it. It's got, it's got a K there. Come on. It's half of your TV will display this in perfect, perfect clarity. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, no, it's, it's it's really interesting. I don't know if it's how much this would really help with VR. Taking it up to 4K depends. Like, well, I think we've had this discussion before. It depends on what the uh, uh, the field of view is for the 4K. If you if you're talking 4K in a small box in front of you, that's one thing. Versus 4K all over, that's going to be something totally different. Um, it's also gonna it's it's, it's also going to depend on. The, the game manufacturers out there. Is it going to upsample the games that I already have? It's 720 up to 4K. Answer: No, your games aren't going to get upscaled all the way to 4K. You, to, are new games going to get, um, you know, built in 4K? I don't know. So it's like it's yeah. one of those things. They, there's a it, lot of question it's marks. Game development, right? They'll tell you they'll make games at 4K, and you realize it's 2K. Remember? I remember they told us it was 1080p and we're getting 900. So just expect if you're not playing on PC, 
it's going to be 2K resolution for all your games, and then your, your, uh, your what do you call it again? Your VR would be 1080p at max. So just call yeah. it whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's not pretend here. Anyone else wants to chime in, or do you just know that it's going to be whatever? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's here. It, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's kind of disappointing in some way that they could have come up with this, you know, initially with the consoles, but they're essentially giving people that dot five upgrade, which was, which which means, you know, everyone who just bought their console now is looking at, well, either they're going to stick to a 1080p TV, or they're going to upgrade to 4K and have to buy a new PlayStation if they choose to, to do so, or they're going to have to wait for the next console cycle. And we're, we're, we're going to an every five-year model instead of the every 10-year model, which, um, which, which, which would mean that it's almost going to go like smartphones, where it's like, you know, you're going to have these S updates with consoles now. I mean, if they're going to do that, I just think if they're going to do that, they should make it an attachment, man. That's something that just needs to be. I'd rather, I'd rather have an attachment... And disconnect it to the back of my PlayStation or Xbox and be done. I know I paid, you know, like a like a evolution kit on the Samsung TVs. I know I'm mm -hmm. paying slightly less, but whatever. I don't have to buy a whole brand new console. That's the thing um, that they, they need to do. And Sony can do that with the PlayStation because it's only got two USB ports. So yeah, it's yeah. quite nice. All right, and uh, final key news of the week: Tesla announced the Tesla Three. Uh, which of course is the $35,000 electric vehicle. So guys, uh, thoughts while I share the screen on Tesla's new mid-range vehicle right Well, here. first of all, did you guys hear the rumor that what Elon Musk wanted to have was a Model S, a Model E, and a Model X? What, what? Yeah! That, well, and it's all like he couldn't, uh, apparently Ford still owns some kind of patent or trademark on Model E because of the old original Fords, and so that's why this is the Tesla 3. Oh, wow. Uh, nerd! I didn't think it was a Model E that I wanted to have, but I, th I think it was always planned as the Model 3 to be, I think he wanted to name the Model 3 the Model T, not E. Because he wanted to take that iconic, this is like the first of its kind when it comes out. Because this was this is the goal. Everything that has happened till now, the Roadster, the Model S, the Model X, everything that has happened till now was all built for this car to come out. It was all built so that people can have affordable, um, you know, electric or EVs that they can basically get into for less than for less than forty grand. Yeah. This is the price of a regular car, you know, for and you get it has all the design um, features of the of the Model S, right? So, personally, I, I would say this is probably one of the biggest announcements out there, but it's also one of the, I would say one of the most underwhelming announcements at the same time, right? It's important because we finally see what Big Elon Musk do. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's and a 15, uh, fifteen inches smaller. So that's where all the Motorola zooms went. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a yeah. fifteen inch tablet. There is no center console. That is everything yeah. on there on the console. Uh, it it's, looks like it looks like the seating looks better to me uh, than the Model S. Even though, trust uh, Model S seating is very weird, um, but. Uh, it looks nice. I mean, you know, it's got a um, autopilot built in too. So mm -hmm. that I like. I like that, that that feature is standard across all Teslas. Zero to sixty in six what seconds. six seconds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah so. I mean, and it's, it covers two hundred and about the almost the same mileage as the yeah, Model S. Two hundred plus miles. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 what they it's what he's wanted to put out there for quite some time. Now the thing is going to be this is coming out in twenty eighteen. Seventeen. Right? Yeah. Oh well, no! End of 2017. So basically, 2018 is coming around holiday season of 2017. So I would say 2018 is most likely because they always they always delays and stuff like this. So 2018 is most likely when we're going to see this thing sh ship out. Now, if you're gonna if, if you want to actually even get your hands on this, you have to basically put up a thousand bucks like right now pre so you can get yeah so you can which, pre order which, one which of these. Which is refundable, though, by the way. Yeah. No, it's not the fact that it's refundable. The fact that you have to put your down payment in right now for a car you might not see for, in essence, what is over a year and a half. So you're going to wait for a year and a half. You're going to put down 
actually, no, it's more than a year and a half. It's a year and three quarters, basically, almost two years. You have to basically put a thousand bucks now and basically wait for two years to see what you're gonna uh, what you're gonna get. So I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the. I mean, putting that putting down the thousand dollars to me doesn't matter at all. Look, it, it's if you're the gonna waiting. Buy it, it's the it, waiting. Yeah, but it's not like they didn't tell you it was gonna come in two twenty. Uh, it's gonna come twenty seventeen. You already said that it was coming later, but the announcement yeah. is today. So, so there's no misconception there. I mean, you just gotta wait, or you go buy something else. You know, yeah, pick check, that's what I'm saying. Other people probably look at other EVs out there, and, and and all the work that's being done by other companies to bring the EVs out. Look at the Volt. Even the Volt is getting better. The newer version of the Volt is getting better. Uh, I think uh, Ford is coming out with something else, whatever their um, the EV brand is. Everyone is improving on the EV brand, and it's going to be all around that. They've been trying to all get to that sub fifty grand range. So anything that comes out between now 2017 and even some of the 2018 models are definitely going to take away from the you know from the thunder. From for um, uh, for the Model E, um, the yeah, Model I, I, Three. I, now you have me calling the Model E. Model 3. I, I definitely. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you one as a as an EV owner. Uh, what oh, do I don't own an EV. I've just oh. I've been test driving them, and we still haven't. The, the The problem is our condo is still fighting us on installing the charger the way they want it to be installed. So it's oh, okay. kind of frustrating. Um, but someone who has an, 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 was an EV, you have, an, you have a hybrid, right? Um, well, I don't anymore. Oh, I, you used to. Okay. I had a, I had a plug-in for a little while, and wow, because okay. of some of these issues, we we actually did swap it out for just a regular little hatchback. Okay, uh, but someone who's who's owned an EV, all right, let me <laughs> refer it back here. Uh, used one. Used one. Smelt one. Used touched one. one. I mean, because I, I don't I don't want to bring my own bias of Tesla some some of the design things, which right. doesn't matter on this car. But since you've used one, what do you think about you know the announcement, what they've showcased, and what the car represents as a whole? So, so first of all, I mean, this is exactly what a number of us, uh, sort of just general consumers, were waiting for. Because there was, uh, in, unless we won the lottery, there was really no feasible way for us to pull off um, uh, the the sedan, the Model S. Um, so, really, what I'm going to be curious to see is what kind of impact this has on other manufacturers, because we're talking 35 for a Model 3. And that's only five grand more than I think a, a an entry level Nissan Leaf. Really? And I know I handily no, know I which, that... which car I would rather own. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, the the Nissan Leaf starts well, at. I thought it was I like twenty Nissan grand or something. Yeah, I thought that. Holy. Yeah. Dude, you are right. Yeah, it's it starts the at S configuration starts at twenty nine. Wow, God, those cars are that expensive. I'd rather get. Uh, I'll drive my Honda. Here's Here's where the math gets funky, is you pay way more up front, but by the time you get all of your rebates and tax yeah. credits and brakes, the car eventually will cost somewhere around 17 or 18K. But that's also going to be true of the Model 3. Yeah. And I can still tell you which car I would much rather own. So, so the problem for a lot of consumers still with the Model 3 is that you do have to pay a lot more up front. You know, you, you technically are on the hook for 35, and then eventually you'll get tax rebates and you'll get tax credits and uh, from the state and federal government. Um, and I don't know how much longer those will last if the popularity of electric vehicles starts to climb. Um, yeah. But this is a huge shot in the arm for the industry. Um, and, and it's also one of the ways that we sort of disingenu disingenuously talk about these cars is because most people think the Nissan Leaf is a cheap car or an inexpensive car. I shouldn't say cheap. It's actually a really nice car. Um, but it's still a $30,000 automobile to start. And so now we really do need to have better conversations because everyone's talking, oh, it's the $35,000 Tesla. And I've already seen a number of people in comments saying like, oh, yeah, but I can get a Nissan Leaf for way cheaper. <laughs> like, no, you can't. <laughs> I think what's going to really, um, the, competi the competition here is going to be between the Volt, which everyone absolutely loved the concept but got disappointed the first time around, which is now, I think the, the Volt starts at about 35, no, 33, 34, so it's it's around the same price range as a Volt. Mm -hmm. So it would be, it'd be really interesting to see how, you know, this fight between the Chevy Volt, I think, uh, yeah, the Nissan Leaf, is, I don't think the Nissan Leaf is a big name in the EV um, space. Well, I think it, so it is in EV circles. EV I mean, because it was, especially after rebates, it was, yeah. you know, a, a fairly affordable, completely electric vehicle from a reputable manufacturer. So yeah. you still see quite a few Leafs tooling around, especially in Southern California, where we have a, a growing infrastructure for charging electric vehicles. Um, 
BMW like has uh, its own EV, right? And the i3. The BMW EV has become a lot more popular. We're we're starting to see a few of those Audi EVs trickle in. Um, yeah. The, yeah. I, see, I guess see, what I'm interested in though is, is is how does uh, especially with the introduction of the, of the uh, Model Three, uh, how does that compete against the four cylinder market? Especially the you know because your Honda four cylinders are priced in the 20,000s, you know, mm -hmm. the Toyota four-cylinders. How does that affect that market itself? Because, you know, sometimes people will want to stretch and go, okay, fine, I might go to like a 30000 or $35,000 car, you know. Right. So how does this affect? Because, you know, the four-cylinder market is, is considered the most energy-saving, uh, you know, gasoline market because you're using a, a smaller engine, especially if you're driving the standard, you can save mm -hmm. more and stretch, all that kind of stuff. So... I'm just wondering like how that would affect that market itself uh, as as it goes down the line. You know, it, it's it's tricky to try and predict because what the Model 3 could stand to do is act as a really fun disruptor between the four-cylinder and six-cylinder markets. Yeah. Because EV performance, I mean, even in a Nissan Leaf, if you take it out of eco mode, you can surprise a couple cars off the line with that thing. You see this little Nissan hatchback, and we were tooling up. Uh, my buddy had one, wait, a, a, like a first or second year Nissan Leaf, and uh, we tooled up on a Mustang and totally took him by surprise on one, <laughs> on one stoplight. And he actually tried to race us on the second one, and we hung with him for a surprisingly long period of time off the line. So, sorry, I'm laughing because Mustangs are so <laughs> terrible. No, but... That's, no, no, that's no, 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 straight line. Mu the Mustang is a, is a beast when it comes to... And, and I'm not line. saying it was any kind of, you know, like, I, I don't know if it... I, I don't remember... I'm still making fun of Mustangs. They're American-made cars. But, you know, for, for, for people who like to tool around, and especially for people who like a little torque twist, um, you can't get twistier than an EV. Yeah, it's 100% torque the second you put the pedal yeah. down, um, and that's really fun. So I, I think you know when we when we're trying to talk about like efficiency, and then we talk about like what electricity costs. You know, we've got a lot of really nuanced things that we have to kind of balance out between how these vehicles are maintenance, how they're operated, what they actually cost over time. Um, the the numbers I think are still in EV's favor, but they bring a really fun driving style to the table that four cylinders often can't match until you start climbing up into some of the, like, you know, uh, sport edition. Um, Honda S2000. Hondas and stuff like that. But then you're also kind of throwing away part of your efficiency argument. Oh, yeah, your efficiency goes out the window. Forget, not kind of, it's gone. Um, <laughs> so, so you don't really lose that same kind of, or I mean, like for when I was a kid and I was, you know, I had my my arms in the guts of little four bangers and we were bolting on turbos and stuff like that. Um, if we'd ever had the the capabilities back then to play around with electric vehicles to the same degree, we probably would have been working on those. It's just they're so much fun to drive. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting marketplace. Uh, I, I like to see. I want to see what. Um, Honda and Toyota, because I think the, the big change is what Honda and Toyota do, do in that market, as well as also VW, in terms of making a cost-effective EV that looks like a car. Because Tesla yeah. now, I mean, every other EV to me has looked like crap. Oh, the BMW um, one looks like a toddler yeah. shoe. Yeah, exactly. Okay. BMW yeah. dropping that, too. I was kind of like, you have the i8 that looks so slick, and then you give me the i3 that looks like you threw that up. And so I mean, we need on. an i5 that just looks like... A regular BMW. BMW. Exactly. <laughs> that would be on point. So I yeah, think we need we need the i5 that looks like a blend between the uh, three model and the i8. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean I, the, I, a regular three model? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, <laughs> I, 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 I agree that, right? but it, but it's also it's like it's it's like I look at the Nissan Leaf, and I think Nissan did something really really right there. So now I tool around in a little Nissan hatchback, um, and uh, the Leaf is almost exactly the same car as my little Versa Note, right? It's just the styling on it is just a little bit sharper. It's a little bit edgier. They didn't do that really obnoxious thing that I didn't like with the BMW and with uh, the uh, Prius, yeah. where it's like we have to make an EV or a hybrid look like some funky alien spaceship mobile. <laughs> yeah, and, and it looks terrible. And so yeah. Toyota, I think, is actually in the most delicate position right now because they've built so much of their fleet on their hybrid technology of them been licensing their hybrid technology out to other manufacturers. And, you know, like when you see a Chevy commercial and they say, like, oh, and the Volt's like new technology and Toyota's hybrid tech is now 10 years old, they're not wrong. Yeah. 
And and Toyota has every resource to just flip the switch and drop a killer EV, but they're milking their synergy platform for every dime they can get out of it, and I think it might leave them in a in a sensitive position. And you're right because I mean you have a lot of Camrys now that are you know hybrids, you know, especially the ones that Uber drivers are using you know, oh, throughout yeah. New, York, New York City and you know around the country, um, and you know dropping an EV Camry and dropping an EV Honda is where like an Accord. Or even a Civic. Civic is, is the car you can play around with. Because Civic has the hatchback. They have so many different designs for a Civic. You drop an EV there. That is where we're going to start seeing that change. Especially if, I think also to some of the market, uh, where you have the fossil cylinder fossil petrol heads who want to tweak, and you give them some tweaking options in the car. Uh, where you can actually do some software tweaking to either ramp up power at certain times. You know, those things you can do in the, in the Tesla too, like with the... Uh, insane mode, but on a different scale for those kind of vehicles. I think eventually, you know, you're going to have a market where those kind of things change. But I like the fact that Tesla has dropped this, and at least hopefully that changes the market, and then you start seeing just a whole different slew of vehicles uh, come out. But we'll have to wait till 2017, 2018, like Sam says. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, anything else before we round up? Or let me look at some questions here. Is there any other news uh, segments? I'm just getting into all kinds of arguments about the iPhone SE in the live chat. This is oh, kind of fun. wow, wow. A anything else I missed, guys? Um... <laughs> 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 all right, I guess, I guess that's it. That is it. Um, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, as always, we always end up the show with what we have on the channel currently, our channels, and what we're going to do next week. So I'm going to start off with uh, the one and only Mr. Warren Bowman. What can we expect from you next week and what is currently on the channel? Yes, we're looking at you, Warren. We're looking at you. Stuff. I mean, what do you have right now? It can't be just stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Lots of stuff. <laughs> All right, all right. So Mr. Warren Bowman says, yeah, stuff and lots of stuff on the channel. Um, Mr. Juan Bagnell, what do you have on uh, Pocket Now as well as also some gadget guy you can you know, fire away? So some gadget guy, I'm actually going to be taking a look at a couple of really cool camera bags coming up. Um, I, I'm sort of a, a, a bag whore. So just whoa, like whoa, 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 whoa. The kids no, no. will do this. No, yeah, no, no, no. Too. To, to, like massive bag slut. Is that better? What would you, what wow. would you do for a Louis Vuitton? I don't even want to. <laughs> <laughs> no. You are a, you are a wow. No, I'm, I'm not I'm not a Louis Vuitton fan, but I did get my wife this really trick. I'm uh, sorry, this is so 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 lame. <laughs> um, I got my wife this really trick OGO bag, um, the shoulder sling purse, and um, it's maybe one of the most gadget friendly female bags I've ever seen because it's got this really wide strap so it's easy to hold on to and then you open it up and there are all these different little compartments but they've built in really great dividers for things like throwing in a small tablet here's your smartphone um, a, a place specifically built for a phone battery charger I mean it's like this is cool I mean like I think this bag is cool and I'm never going to carry a purse <laughs> <laughs> but I've got bags from STM uh, an amazing Australian manufacturer and Book um, for sort of like camera and tech equipment which are just uh, um, I, I think those are super fun to play with and then for pocket now um, oh and then on sorry on some gadget guy I also I don't have it here on the table with me but I, I put up a review on a pan time lapse timer and so it's this little base, and you put a camera mount on this little base, and you can wirelessly control how quickly it scans through a panning shot. And it's really cool if you're into time-lapse photography or hyperlapse photography. Um, it's it's uh, one of the most cost-effective ways I've ever seen for building. You've seen those time-lapse videos, and it like sort of pans through a shot, yeah. and like you see everything's happening in fast-forward. Um, this is probably the most cost-effective way to do that well. And then for Pocket Now, I'm going to be spending time with the iPhone SE over the weekend. We're going to wrap up our full review. I'm going to do a couple little comparisons, like how this compares against the iPhone 6S, how this compares against maybe some, some other mid-range or Android smartphones. And then I think just to piss off the Pocket Now audience, I might just start calling this an entry-level phone because they've really got their undies in a twist about me calling it a mid-ranger. So I, I think I might have to mess with them even more. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. And um, Sam, how about you? Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. That is very true, actually. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, although Sam still owes us a uh, server. Uh, oh, that thing. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, there, there so is hopefully, that hopefully we'll get it at some point in the future. I, yeah, I, hopefully we will get this at some point in the future. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice little server here that's been misbehaving, but we're, we're getting it back into the rights. We'll see. Yeah. The, uh, we're talking about a free NAS uh, NAS box, so, and I've, I've probably mentioned it a couple of times, but uh, it's been giving me a little bit of issues. So I need to I need to get some things figured out with it before I uh, do the video on there. Okay. Yeah, that that is one thing, the free NAS box. All right. Um, for for me, and also just the channel in general, uh, a lot of stuff this week. Uh, and if you guys noticed, we've been doing a lot more entertainment stuff. Uh, comic book leader, of course, so definitely check that out, and we'll have more in the future. Um, in terms of, like, key tech reviews, the Logitech G900 KO Spectrum uh, Gaming Mouse, that's it right here. This thing is absolutely fantastic. Um, Audiofly headphones, as well as also the LG Gram 15 laptop, which is uh, that laptop behind me that weighs less than a kilogram. Uh, the Samsung KS 9500 uh, 4K TV, we also dropped that this week. Uh, it's got probably the best operating system of any TV in terms of like using smart TV functionality and all that stuff, as well as the Amazon Tab. Uh, next week we have, um, oh, I, I was going to mention, I can't say it, I'm on NDA, so something else <laughs> is going to drop next week. Um, we're going to have uh, a few speakers. Um, uh, speaker videos, as well as also my review of the AMD um, uh, A6 uh, processors, the new APU processor that just dropped. So uh, stay tuned, check that out. And thank you very much, guys. So subscribe to everyone's channel. Check out Mr. Warren Bowman at bw1.com. His uh, lower third is not there, but I'm sure that is where his website is. <laughs> and you can also follow him on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Mr. Juan Bagnell, uh, you can also check his videos out at Pocket Now. Follow him on Twitter. It is some gadget guy, and uh, you can uh, you know listen to his comments, his views, all his you know ramblings and maniacal talk, all that stuff. Sorry, no maniacal talk. I apologize. And then uh, Mr. Sam, a.k.a. Black Iron. I swear, everybody does not have a lower third. What is going on? Well, I got bounced <laughs> out, so I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't even replace the lower third. So I can't oh, screen share. I can't lower third. Oh. <laughs> this is not my fault. This is not my fault. I mean, I'm like, I'm going from one image to the other. I'm like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> anyway, Black Iron underscore man. Follow him on Twitter. And, of course, it's Board at Work. Uh, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much, and always enjoy your entertainment. Bam. So here.